all three legislative candidates. If I want to sell my land to the highest bidder, does the government get to tell me who I can sell to? <laughs> well, I'll take and Brandon that, did the guess. last one, so. Okay. <laughs> um, enough abuse. What? what I, we all understand we want to be able to sell our property, as you know, especially as people retire and whatnot. What I would love to see is a program that would perhaps, and it might have to be done even on a federal level, but a a tax exclusion. Um, if it is sold to somebody who's a continuing farmer, a newer farmer, um, even passing down to another generation, because that would help equalize um, the potential for who you, who you might sell to. If if you if the seller would ha would pay less of a tax on the sale, then the net cash to them after tax is, is greater perhaps. It's very hard to compete with the ultra wealthy. They can come in and outbid anybody. That, that's a traditional farmer. So I think we have to be very creative in coming up with ways that would that would you know that would compensate a seller appropriately, but still come up with a way of, of putting that land in, in the next generation of farmers. Thanks. Thanks for the question. And normally I would say no, but with what's happening in North Dakota. The governor told me two years ago he's got an agenda. And his agenda has become quite clear. They're bringing the Chinese in, Bill Gates is coming in. And in our constitution it says we have a right to life, liberty, and this is the North Dakota constitution and the pursuit of land. So how can you pursue land if, if you have people coming in that are, let's use Bill Gates for an example. He's openly hostile to the ranchers. He does not want ranchers. You're going to let them buy up the pasture land, the grassland, and uh, eliminate the ranchers. So ranching is a way of life more than it is the in. I mean, of course you have to make a living on it, but it's a way of life. It's a good way of life. And so they want to, if they want to eliminate that, we have to look out for our citizens. If the Chinese, if you're a Chinese, you're a communist. They have one party over there, Chinese Communist Party. So if they're buying land here, they have an intention of taking over. And so that's what's happening. The Chinese own millions of acres in the United States. So yeah, I mean, we need to be careful about and pick and choose who's buying land here. If we're going to look out for our citizens in the future of the state, now if it's, uh, I mean, I, I mean that that's kind of what we're going to have to talk about this winter at the session, and there will be a lot of debate about it. What I, what are going to be the boundaries on? And if I want to sell my land, can I sell to Putin? Because Putin's got more money. I mean, knowing that he's going to be doing some nefarious activity here, or, or the Chinese, I mean, we probably should talk about that. What is the future of the state when they're actively coming in here and buying it up? They're setting up these windmill developments. They're setting up, trying to set up solar developments. And they're turning around and selling them to the Chinese right under our nose. The oil wells, they're buying oil wells. So we need to be careful about what's happening here. We, I mean... I took an oath to the Constitution to defend, to defend this country from enemies, foreign and domestic. We have domestic enemies. Let's face it, and they, they, they want to destroy this, the freedoms we have. So they maybe don't, they just have a different look at it or whatever. But um, yeah, we need to talk about that this session. There will be some bills considering these uh, points that we're talking about. So, thanks. This, uh, this issue has become very difficult to answer because usually uh, my philosophy is I am a free market absolutist. I want the free market to work. Um, and uh, if you want to sell your land to your neighbor, you should have every right to sell your land to your neighbor. Um, but as we know, this is not what is happening in our state and around the country. You're not selling to your neighbor. You're selling to somebody uh, who has uh, one of the largest corporations or some of the largest corporations in the world who are coming in buying up farmland and, and um, taking up land all over the state and pretty much not ever using it for farming uh, and when it is used for farming it's renting it back out to the original owner. Um, this is really dangerous. Uh, it, it is a national security issue in a lot of ways. Um, it's tough for somebody like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is as we know is coming in and buying up farmland um, but he's also an American citizen 
So it's difficult. It's easier to say for somebody like China or Russia, if a, if a political party or an entity that's owned by the Communist Party comes in and buys land, uh, it's a lot easier to say that they cannot and to pass a statute against that. It's a lot more difficult for somebody that's an American citizen. Um, so it seems like the only uh, way to go around that would be that if you have a certain amount of farmland and you're not a primary resident of North Dakota, that you cannot buy pass a certain amount of farmland. And that might be the only way that we can fix this whole thing without having complications since he's a U.S. citizen. Um, but yeah, there's going to have to be a lot of conversations about it. But the general philosophy is you should be able to sell your farmland to anybody. However, with the stipulation that if you have a certain amount of farmland in the state and you are not a resident of that state, there have to be some stipulations.